Hey, Mark, you're on the air in Boston. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, um, I heard Shu do a report on uh, Eric the Midget uh, using fraud to give another threat, and uh, I guess the guy was going to file charges. I, I hope you can intervene on this. I know Gary's into some weirdness with Eric the Midget. Eric uh, offering threats again? No, it was really weird. Um, I guess I should update you on this. This is kind of funny. Let me see how much I can explain, Gary. You jump in where you need to. The latest is we heard from the executive. Was this one of the executive? That's a guy. The, the executive producer of In Plain Sight, the Mary McCormick vehicle. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're following along, Eric has gotten a job with them, and we basically got it for him. And everything's going along smoothly. We get a letter this morning <laughs> that the guy, the producer, is pulling his hair out again. Oh, no. I w thought everything was set. What did it say in the letter, Gary? Uh, Eric needs to reschedule the dates. He's having trouble getting his oxygen. And the ol he's only got two dates available, which happen to be the last two days of their shooting, oh. which I can read between the lines. A producer, when you're dealing with a question mark like Eric, the last thing you want to do is, is go down the to the end. last two yeah. days because you don't know what's going to happen. If I was that producer, I would bail on the Eric the Midget concept. We've been telling him to bail all along. Unless on those two days he's got a complete backup plan. I would bail. I yeah. mean, you could just see this is a very, very what difficult... What does he mean? He's, like, like, he mean they booked him, he had his dates... He seemed very happy and satisfied with everything. It wasn't explained in the email, just that he he goes, Gary, I want you to see what I got from one of my showrunners. Yeah. And that's ex what exactly what I said is what it said. It said that Eric contacted them. He's not available on the dates he said he was going to be available. He's only available because of his uh, this oxygen supply oh delivery. God. Oh, my God. Now, first of all, oxygen... It, it's free. It can't be that constant. Con but everybody's got it. It's not like a hard thing to get a hold of. I'm going to guess that Eric's going to tell you that because of whatever assistance he's on, he has to go through a certain company and has to be paid a certain way. Oh, my God. And then you got insulted because Eric sent you a letter. I'm done with him, and I'm not fucking around go at ahead. all. Really? I'm really done with this little shit. Because but by the way, just to finish this, Eric's had three months to get oxygen. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And, and I really mean this, Robin. Okay. Are you looking at me? No good deed goes unpunished with this guy. He really is a miserable little fuck. So I get I get an email from the owner of the Viper Club in L.A. saying, hey, when Eric comes to L.A. to shoot his show, I'd love to hire him for a gig. Okay. So my job is I, so I, I forward it to Eric. Right. He sends me back the nastiest fucking note that says, I always knew you didn't listen. Howard said you were a moron. Now it's apparent. Everybody knows I'm shooting in New Mexico. If you kept your fucking eyes open, you would know. Go oh, back to playing idiot. solitaire and fall asleep in your chair. He's I'm like, idiot. fuck you. I, like, first of all, I don't know for he's driving. Maybe he wants to drive through L.A. and do the gig. Maybe next time he's in L.A. So you know what? You just every, forwarded him the letter. Right. I, without it's none of your business what else he's and doing. And so every, it, with his thinking, right, when the guy from In Plain Sight called me, I should have said, Eric lives in Sacramento. He can't make that trip. And then <laughs> fucking thrown it away. Right. Everyone knows I'm in Sacramento. That's you, right. His handicap is that he's a little fucking prick. <laughs> so you're not talking to him anymore? I, if he's on the air right now, I'll talk to him. But, but anybody no, who sends not, me, he's not on. Anybody who sends me anything for him, I will decide what to do with it. Right. Which means throw, throw, I'll throw it in the garbage. Right. Hope he never gets another game. I mean, I was being nice. Yeah. <laughs> he's funny. He never but ceases to, to be get funny. angry about it. He angry. Fi he finally got an acting job on a major show. And now he's going to fuck it up because he can't get his oxygen tank, which he's had three months to get. Yeah, the whole time we've been talking, he could have been ordering oxygen. <laughs> I know he has a tough Eric, life, but he really, he really is a professional victim. Right. It's, it's always, it's not my fault that I can't do this and I can't do that, I can't do this. And he, everybody should understand hmm. all of my problems. He really is a can't do kind of guy. Right. <laughs> I'm can't do. Eric, the blown mouth midget. We got to get him on the air. You don't have a number on him, do you? I think we do. Let me let's see. I, let's just let, let's ask him what's going on. Come on, I'm curious. Real quick, Rob, and then we'll get right to okay. news. Okay. I mean, you're you're curious, right? I love Eric's right. saga. Yeah. Eric, the obnoxious. Major. What does he need an oxygen tank for anyway? What is he part fish? I think it's a just in case uh -huh. kind of thing because he's going on a plane or something. And he couldn't get that together for three months. Well, you know what? we He went back and forth about how long it takes to get it, and then Johnny was saying it didn't take that long. <laughs> but Johnny also said they were werewolves. <laughs> In New Mexico. <laughs> In New Mexico. <laughs> if Gary can get them on fast. You want to um, You want to take a break? Hey, I'll do a live commercial. Or yeah, something do a live one. While I'm waiting for Eric. Any word from Eric?
Yeah, you got you got a couple of commercials. Yeah, let's do one. All right, d- do it. What happened? No, Eric. Just a voicemail. Uh. But he may call back before. You know how he is. He'll call back when it's most inconvenient. Right. Yeah, he'll call back, and I'll be in the middle yeah, of we'll something. Yeah, we'll be else. signing off. He'll want to yeah. do another half. And hour then he'll be show. mad, by the way, that he you, we called him. Right. He called us back, and you fucking ignored him. Yeah, not understanding. So you know what? If he calls back, just say forget it. No. Really? You want to no, talk to him? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. If, if, if he calls yeah. back, what? We have him. Oh, you have him. Okay. Oh. Put him up now. Yeah, this will be good. <laughs> Let's first ask him about the oxygen tank, and then you can talk about your letter. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, it's so funny because I was I I read the email to Mary and I said I don't it's my day off. Why am I so mad? <laughs> but it, I fucking I was so mad. I wanted to fly out there and kill him. Eric, the pathetic, sick and shit, and lame ass, loud mouth, defensive, stupid, annoying, screwed up, retarded, game jackass. Where is he? I don't see him. I'm nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Hey, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hey, Eric, I'm curious because there's a couple of things going on. We got a letter from the guy from In Plain Sight. Yes. And, like, they're pulling their hair out of their head. Like, you committed to dates and everything, and they got it all together for you. And then you just recently sent them a letter saying you can't get your oxygen tank together after three months. And that you're now changing all the dates. And you're, like, pushing them right to the wall because that, that your availability is the end of their schedule. Is that true? I didn't send them any letter. That's not true. Oh, okay. Did you send them an email? No. How did they get informed the, of this? The only email I sent yesterday at all to anyone involved with this show was a reply to John Strauss asking me if the date of my doctor appointment had changed. I said, no, it has not. It's still the 19th. So, you so why do they think you can't make the dates? I don't know. I Isn't mean, there something about your oxygen tank not being available? It's There's a little bit of a hiccup on that, but trying to work it out. Oh. Uh, oh wait, boy. I'll read you this email from the guy. Tell me if if I've got this wrong, because... Did you talk to someone there? I've talked to several people. People, not through email. All right. But, well, not email, but you've, you've gotten in touch with people. You're giving them scheduling problems. Well, between Johnny and I, we're trying to work that out. So, in other words, he committed to dates, and all I know is they're under the impression that he's not holding to those dates. Right. Well, but the thing is, you said you... Wrote them, and he says, oh, I didn't write them. Like, he did not right. cause them any problem. Yeah. He's just cu- uh, stuck on, I didn't write it. Right. Have you told them in some way, smoke signals or something, <laughs> that you have to change the dates? No. The, let, me, they, let me read you this letter we got from them. Here, Eric, listen to me. Help. <laughs> <laughs> this is from John We're Strauss. Involved with Eric Which, can I just say before you read it, right, John right. Strauss, when he was on the show before we went on vacation was very specific that he needed ironclad dates by January 1st. Right. Okay. Help. He, meaning Eric, he has called twice today, (laughs) pushing back his start date due to complications with getting an oxygen concentrator. He now says he's only available to us on our last two days of shooting. So you didn't say that, Eric? No. Oh. It, by the way, dates changing, that was on their end. Yeah. What? Last week. Gary, you're last, not buying it? No. Uh, B- why? Because they run a business and he's Eric. Right. Gary, you fucking hardly pay a fucking attention. Shut up, eight face and play solitaire. <laughs> now, by the way, speaking of that, let's get on that. You sent Gary the nastiest note, and I think you made a mistake with that. You know, Gary just gets mail for you, and he forwards it to you. You write him a scathing letter back saying, Gary, you're not paying attention. Everyone knows that I'm taping in New Mexico and not Los Angeles. Gary doesn't give a shit. And you know what Gary told me he's going to do from now on? He's going to take all those emails for you and uh, throw them in the garbage. Eric, with your logic, 
When in plain sight called, I should have said, well, Eric lives in Sacramento. He can't be in New Mexico. I'll make decisions for you. I don't know whether you're driving through Los Angeles or I don't know whether you'd want to double on back and go to Los Angeles to make some extra money. I don't decide your fucking social calendar. Gary's had it with you. I really have. He said that's well, the last time he even sends you anything that comes yeah, through. Why here. would I help you? In, in other words, I have to now think for you? I said your, ha your handicap is that you're a prick. <laughs> You're a handicapped is you're a jackass. Shut up Ouch. and listen to me. <laughs> Let me reply. <clears throat> I have an agent just like Howard. I'm not the one that handles that shit, Gary. Email that shit. To Johnny, oh. not to me. That, but but, wait not, but Eric, that's not even that's what you not said. Appropriate. That, I mean, even if that's a fucking retarded logic too. But your logic wasn't like, hey, I don't handle this. Your logic was, you're a jackass who doesn't pay attention. You know, I'm not going to be in L.A. that day. And Gary doesn't work for you, Eric. He doesn't have to send it, your email to your agent. He sends it you to you. You get it and you send it to your agent. Right. Like you can't hit a button. Well, even, he can. John, even Johnny was like, why the fuck is. He emailing that to you. That do you do you not realize that Johnny tells you what you want to hear? You that Johnny thinks you're as big a joke as anybody. No, he doesn't get that. Why'd you have to tell him? That's like jo telling a little kid there's no Santa Claus. Johnny agrees with you because it's better than arguing with you. Johnny thinks it's funny. When you complain about me to Johnny, he goes, "Yeah, that Gary's an asshole because it's funny and he doesn't want to deal with fighting with you." A lot of people think you're an asshole. That's true. But in this case, to you, I wasn't. I was trying to be nice, trying to help you make some extra money. And by the way, facilitating all these emails from the people from In Plain Sight yeah, right Gary from the beginning. doesn't really care. He's doing it to be a nice guy. I've done as much work for you to get on this dumbass show as Johnny has. And it's still not going to happen because now the guy's pulling his head. For some reason, they're under the impression that Eric's not I don't think available. He, I don't think Eric's being truthful whether... How many calls did you make to them yesterday, Eric? I only talked to them a couple of times. Okay, so now it went from one to two. They, they said two. He said, I only called them once. Now it's a couple of times. Right. Maybe. Oh. They don't care, Eric. You're, you're already a big pain in the ass for them. And, and it's not that big a part. Hmm. Maybe at the most three times once. <laughs> at the most. Eric, you called a major production three times over a little bit part. Oh. Are you claiming they asked you to change the dates? Last week, hmm. the email said tentatively the 24th and the fucking 25th. Wow, what a pain in the, the ass. Day, shut up and let me finish my goddamn sentence. <laughs> you are so ungrateful. You're just really the most ungrateful little shit there is. They should get Marty the midget. Yeah, he can act, and he's a nice guy. And you know what? He can get there on his own, and he shows up when you tell him. I'm trying to get Eric work, but it's it's not it's working. It's very difficult. It's making me look no. bad. I can't imagine what those in plain sight people think of me. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to lose this role to Marty the Midget. And Marty can breathe. <laughs> I'm not going to lose this role to anyone. Right. Let me finish. It's, true, it's true. Who could be him? <laughs> There's only one of him. But, Eric, you've got to show up on the days you promised to show up. I am trying to fucking explain that. But you are still. I, uh, it's in taking love. too long. You're in love with your own damn voice. You're not letting me speak. All right, go ahead. Explain to me. Are you working on the days they asked you to work that you agreed to on the air? Simple yes or no. The last person I talked to yesterday with Johnny on a three-way call was the guy said that be there on the what leave on the 23rd, tape on the 24th, possibly either leave on the 24th because they condensed it down to one day of shooting. Okay, and that was them changing not me changing. okay so you're in and <laughs> leave either that day or stay that extra night and leave the next day okay and there's no problem with your oxygen tank i'm i'm working on that there's a hiccup you said there was a hiccup so what's a hiccup eric the concentrator 
possibly will be here the morning of the 23rd. Why not so, get it there earlier? Because can't. It's a two-week process. Oh, boy. If I'm if I'm See, in again, plain sight, I, I'm I don't so long. But here's the thing: if I'm in plain sight, I'm out of this. The other thing Aren't is, with we Eric, talking about this before the end of the year. <clears throat> yeah. And the thing with Eric that I never understand is, it, I'm it, telling you, I know he's a, cutting that concentrator. I don't know what a concentrator is, but he's mm. cutting it close. It's a two week process for him. Right. I don't know that it's a two week process. Right. But he still had plenty of time to it's already a, have it. It's a two week order. Process. So why did you order? Okay, we, we had you on December. Four, we had you on December fourteenth. Why didn't you order it then? Because you could only rent the damn thing for a week at a time. Right, but you knew and the week you needed. Not until this week. I don't buy it. So wow, well, we. When when I last spoke. If I'm in plain sight, I'm getting out of this. Liza Minnelli yeah. is easier to deal with uh, than I know. Eric. And she has more lines. Gary's actually right about this. Because when John Strauss was on, he gave the week. He said it would be two days within this week. Right. The week of the 17th and to so the 24th. And so he could have ordered. So he of knew course he could have ordered. Yeah. Thank you. He said the 18th to the 27th. That's more than a week. I don't know, man. If I'm the producer. So you order it for two oh. weeks. Right. If I'm the producer oh. of In Plain Sight, Eric, I'm out of this. No offense. It's Go too... fucking back and listen to that conversation. All right. Well, do you, listen. Do you, do you not think that, can I ask you a question? Do you think you're easy or difficult to work with? I don't think I'm difficult to work with. You ought to go back and listen to these mm. tapes. They got three calls from you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> And, and by the way, there's you know there's got to be thirty people in the cast. Yeah, there's plenty of guest stars right. every week. That Mary they have McCormick's to deal with. the star of the show. She doesn't even carry on like this. She should be like, I can't get my concentrator. But believe me, the moving parts, you know, the people who come in and out, Eric's the most difficult. Meanwhile, we've totally forgotten about the fact that he's afraid of werewolves, and there are werewolves in New Mexico. <laughs> and it, what, is that I all worked out? I wonder if it's a full moon during the time that Eric's there. Did they ever satisfy you that they have to leave, keep all bears and werewolves away from you? Has anyone told you you believe bullshit? All right. Well, you're the one who said it. I, I'm no. going to leave, Eric, but I'm going to leave with this. In a business where people are used to dealing with the most difficult of the difficult... You have been deemed fucking difficult. Mary McCormick had twins, and she was on the set the next day. She gave birth during a scene. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't complain. Right. All right, Eric. I don't know what's going on, but trust me, you got to pull this together. How many damn times do I have to say that that werewolf shit was bullshit that Johnny put in All that right. he thought was funny? But wasn't. Yeah, but you told me you you didn't know if there were werewolves or not because you read it on IMDb. No, you read I, it on I didn't say Wikipedia. I read Wikipedia, it, idiot. right. <laughs> idiot. Okay. I didn't say I read it. I said Johnny read it. Yeah, and you But you and believed you were, it. You were asking for help. I'm just saying. All right. Thanks, Eric. Listen, I just wanted to know what was going on. Now I've got a pretty clear picture, and I, ho I wish you luck. I hope you're on the show. I'm looking forward to watching it. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Take care, Eric. <laughs> Later. Bye. Bye. Uh, Eric the Midget is back on the phone, but do you really want to go through this no. again? What, I th is, it's a, what we is did the it. problem now? Let me just tell him. Hey, Eric, it's okay. We're done. I mean, you know, we'll do it. We'll talk another day. I, I got to wrap up the show. You call me. You wake yeah. me up out of right. oh, sleep to defend myself. You barely give me fucking chance to defend myself. I gave you more time I than anybody. You kept talking over me. And not only that, well, you're now boring I'm, sometimes. Now I'm fully awake. Yesterday. <laughs> <Is that our problem? laughs> well, what do you want from me? You were looking a sleeping midget. <laughs> Call me back tomorrow. I realized the phone conversation that I had with the last person. He was so animate at getting the oxygen thing to to work, he, he took my doctor's phone number and the oxygen company's phone number. They didn't tell you that. Right. 
Well, okay. Uh, all right. All right. No problem. I get it. That. All right. I was wrong. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> okay. Got it. Go back to sleep. That's all right. You cleared it all up. Hope it all works out. Is he calling in on a walkie-talkie? Doesn't it always sound like he's on a... He's breaking up. And... <laughs> Break it one Don't Break worry, Eric. I'm, I'm with you. He keeps letting go of the button. <laughs> Hold I'm the button. To I was talking to you on the same damn cell phone. I was talking to you on a few minutes ago. All right. Ago. Okay, Eric. All right, I get it now. Thank you for clearing that up. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now we all have it. Sorry, we misunderstood. Sorry. Talk to you later, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> later. Bye. All right. Has everyone got that? Eric's clearing it up. I don't know right. what he is. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> now, you understand what Eric meant, right? Of course All I right. do. Okay. I'm Me too. A joke. Yeah, I know, Eric. Carry <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Interrupt. I am away. You interrupt. That's all I hear. It's like a super villain. Well, everyone understand it now. Yes. Okay, yeah. because there was there was a there, Eric is right. There was a bit of confusion, and now it's been cleared up. He didn't tell us that. Before. Right. Yeah. All right. Now he was away. <laughs> Gary, yes. you've just deemed him the most difficult of the difficult. Yes. Is there, yes. is there any way though that Eric is telling any semblance of the truth? No. Or... No, because he doesn't know. Because he doesn't know how to work in the confines of a business. He's never worked in a business, so he's telling what he believes believes to be the truth, but it's not. Howard keeps saying, if I'm in plain sight, if I'm running this show, I'm out. Yeah, I agree. You know, they they wanted to get involved because it'd be cool to get a little press on the show, but now it's it's really fucking with their show. And you know what? They got a bunch of press from us anyway. God bless them, you know? And, and I don't begrudge them, by the way. They, they deserve every bit of press they have for how much effort they put in. They should pull the ripcord and walk away. There's What's other... your prediction? Will that happen, or will, will Strauss and company stick with Strauss it? seems like he's he really wants to get Eric on, but at some point, it's got to end. You very well, because I believe but given the fact, you also mentioned they got a lot of press out of this, but that's also me that also means that all eyes are on them. Will they stick with the handicapped guy and put him in the show, I, or will they bail? Do you think? I think they've done. Uh, I think they've done everything they can. I think I, you know, I don't think anybody's going to say to them, "Oh, you're anti-handicap," because I told you, Eric's biggest handicap is he's an asshole. So they're anti-assholes, not anti-handicap people. His handicap is not what's hindering this. It's his, his fucking attitude. Right. Right. Man, I rarely see you this fired up anymore. Fuck him. A prick. <laughs>